want to ask you about a comment that you made about white supremacy in Iowa on Friday. I've never once encountered that yet. I'm sure the I'm sure the boogeyman white supremacist exists somewhere in America. I've just never met him. <laughs> never seen one. Never met one in my life, right? Maybe I'll meet a uh, maybe I'll meet a unicorn sooner. And and maybe those exist too. So, just because somebody hasn't encountered one doesn't mean that the notion of white supremacy doesn't exist as a threat in America. What do you think goes through the minds of the families of the three victims in yesterday's shooting when they hear you say that white supremacy is basically a fantasy? I'm sure they're grieving for their loss, and I don't want to politicize those victims. Dana, this is a very sensitive situation where we should have nothing but foremost respect for those victims and not bring them into partisan politics. But I was responding to a question where someone asked me, what, have I, what racism have I experienced in recent years? And I answered honestly, most of that racism has come from the modern left. It's happening during the course of this campaign. Kara Swisher calling me Rama Smarmy the other day and reveling in, in making twists of my last name. People effectively reducing me to the color of my skin and my attributes. That comes today from the modern left. You're really gonna try and gaslight using the victims of the shooting? You know damn well he's talking about the problems of this country at large, and white supremacy is not one of them. Racism comes from all skin colors and all walks of life. There are more black on white crimes than there are white on black, and no one says there's a problem of black supremacy in this country. But you already know that. That's why you had to bring up the victims of the shooting. You have no argument. So you have to resort to what you always do, lie and manipulate. But the reality well, is, do you this is part of a dogma that white supremacy in this country. Does still exist in the United States? I acknowledge that all forms of racial animus exist in the United States, including fringe branches. I mean, that's clearly what was at the at the head of this mentally deranged individual responsible for this shooting. Yes. But I think there are many forms of mental derangement that cause us to see one another on the basis of our skin color and our attributes. And I think what we need to revive, Dana, and it's my job as the leader, hopefully as the next president to do this, to revive our doctrine of e pluribus unum, not just celebrating our diversity and our skin deep attributes, but celebrating what unites us across that diversity. That's what we've forgotten in the United States of America. Look how upset she is. He's saying the best way to unite the country and stop interracial crimes is by focusing on what we have in common instead of our physical differences. And she's just like, but, but, but white supremacy. <laughs> the right remedy is actually abandoning all discrimination and moving forward with colorblind meritocracy That's in the United States of America. You, you, you took it to, uh, to an, another level on Friday. In addition to the comment we played, you took issue with comments from Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. She reportedly said, quote, we don't need any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown, vo a brown voice. About that, you said, these are the words of the modern grand wizards of the modern KKK. You know, I'm sure, the KKK was responsible for more than a century's worth of horrific lynchings, rapes, murders of black people. How in any way are the views you're talking about comparable to the views and atrocities committed by the KKK? What I said is the Grand Wizards of the KKK would be proud of what they would hear her say because there's nothing more racist than saying that your skin color predicts something no, about the content you didn't, you didn't of your just viewpoints say that, you or your You didn't just ideas. say they would be proud. You said these are the words of the modern Grand Wizards of the modern KKK. It is the same spirit. You're right about that, Dana. I think it is the same spirit to say that I can look at you and based on just your skin color, that I know something about the content of your character, that I know something about the content of the viewpoints you're allowed to express. For Ayanna Presley to tell okay, me that's... that because of my skin color, I can't express my views, that is wrong. It is divisive. That is it is a, driving hate that is in this a country. Debate. This is dividing okay, that our is country a debate. to a breaking point. That is a debate that is, that is based on nonviolent discussion that you just said you're using rhetoric, which yes. she said she's using rhetoric. Uh, there is, that's one thing. And another thing is to say that she represents and she is a, a modern version of a KKK, which as you know, was dedicated to the subjugation and violence against black people. Did she even hear what he said? He said, these are the words 
words of the Grand Wizards of the modern KKK. This clearly means he wasn't talking about the violence. He wasn't talking about the lynching. He was talking about the rhetoric of the KKK, the division they spread, the hate they spread, the thoughts and ideas that they provoked. Which party is more like that today? In his opinion, it's the left because of statements like Ayanna Presley's. How, how on earth is she a modern Dana, grand wizard let's be intellectually of that honest. kind of organization? Let, let's be intellectually honest and get to the heart of what this debate ought to be about. There is a worldview that says that the remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. That if you're black or brown, you have to have a particular point of view. That's from Ibram Kendi. That's from Ayanna Presley, the people I quoted in my speech yesterday. But can There's you a have an intellectually have, honest conversation of who you are, when you accuse you have her to be able of to have being your own a opinion. grand wizard Let's of have the, the KKK? Debate. The point I'm highlighting is that even the people who, in good spirit, we all agree that the KKK was an awful organization that is a toxic stain in our national history. So given that we can start from that point of agreement, now that allows us to say, well, who actually sounds more like that organization today? the people who are calling for more racial discrimination on the basis of skin color. So yes, I think that is an but intellectually it's not useful about starting point for a provocative like discussion the whole, that we need to have in this country. The whole country. point is and the KKK that, the reality, wasn't Dana, just about is rhetoric. We have to speak openly They lynched in this people, they murdered people, they raped people, they burned their and homes. And that was wrong. Simply that was because obviously wrong. Of, so, wrong. Okay, Obvious, so that, that, again, that is obviously a if wrong you want to have an intellectual discussion, do, do you think that maybe comparing her to the Grand Wizard and, and the, the notion of what she said to being a modern leader of the KKK was maybe a step too far, or you stand by what you said? I like how the media finally wants to separate words from violence. Whenever they want to take away free speech, words and violence are the same thing. But now she needs to make sure that we clarify that words and violence are two totally different things and should not be compared in any way. But whenever someone on the left physically assaults someone for what they say, it's justified because words are violence. I stand by what I said to provoke an open and honest discussion in this country. Because there is a gap, Dana, between what people will say in private today and what they will say in public. I think we need to close that gap. I think we need to have real, open, honest, raw conversation as Americans. That is our path to national unity. And there are many Americans today who are deeply frustrated by the new culture I'm of anti-racism sure that's really racism and new clothing. A and we need to have that debate in the open. Dan, I think I'm that you're so doing, sure how with due respect, a discussion what many in the media do, of picking, on, <laughs> picking on some fringe comment in the context of a broader context that I was offering it in a speech. All right, so you just said that your comment issue. was fringe. Let's have the courage to confront the meat of that. You, no, I'm saying you drew a you fringe comment from a much longer comment as speech. What, what I did was I do too. explain to our viewers that you were asked a question and you took it to a point where you called a sitting member of Congress who is black, calling her the modern grand wizard of the KKK. There she goes, making his point, who is black. Who is black. Just because she was black doesn't mean she can't say something stupid and hateful and divisive. Presley said, we don't want black faces that aren't black voices, meaning every black person has to agree with me or we don't want them. And somehow, this CNN anchor, I don't even know her fucking name, wants to defend that and say that Ramaswamy's the racist for calling out how awful what she said was and how racist it really was. CNN ignores the real racism just because she's black. Who is black? And continues to push the divisive rhetoric that white supremacy is the biggest problem in America. If Ramaswamy was white, he'd be known as the biggest white supremacist politician. White supremacy is so much a non-issue that everyone else is actually a protected class. And it's never been more obvious than someone like Ayanna Presley saying something so blatantly racist and no one mentions it, but as soon as Ramaswamy calls it out, he's getting attacked by the media. We don't need black faces that don't want to be a black voice. We don't need Muslims that don't want to be a Muslim voice. We don't need queers that don't want to be a queer voice. Black people, they can't think for themselves. Yeah. Muslims, they can't think for themselves. Gay people, they have to think super gay. 